Wisconsin v. Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Here is a third party intervener in that matter appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for the discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and make a reservation of all my rights here this morning. The records reflect the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. For the record, I don't consent to being called that name. It is noted. All right, Mr. Brooks, just preliminarily, do you anticipate calling any additional witnesses today? For the record, I don't consent to being called that name. And what was the question? Do you anticipate calling any witnesses today? I don't, I don't believe today. We are here for the continuation of testimony. The only witness that I'm aware of that's on your list that I, that you added is your mother, Dawn Woods. So I would expect that if she's going to testify, she would be here. Otherwise, I will be going through the colloquy with you as to whether you intend to testify or not. Did you receive my ICS that I addressed to you? Oh, I haven't looked. Actually, I just went to you and then went to the prosecution. Is the audio on? The audio is on. Do you know when you sent those? Saturday. So that would have been the 22nd. State receive anything through like the inner office communication? We have not. I just checked. Nothing has been received at my office. I can email the jail administrator to find out if there's anything in transit, if there's no objection from the parties from the state. No objection. From you, sir? No objection. I definitely want those documents received as they obtain important information. You said you forwarded them to a staff member on Saturday? Yes. Do you know if that was morning, afternoon, or some other time? Maybe afternoon. And those are two ICF forms? Yep. One addressed to you directly and one addressed to the district attorney's office. If you want to generally tell me the topic, we can cover it verbally. The topic is pertaining to exculpatory evidence. Some things were learned and once they came to my attention, I felt the need to immediately address the court about this information. All right. What information? Make an offer of proof for me, sir. The expert witness for prosecution in regards to, I believe it was inspecting the vehicle, Officer Ryan Schultz. Question was asked, did he know if there were any recalls on that vehicle? And I believe that a Brady claim should be visited because there were, in fact, recalls on that vehicle. In fact, there were recalls on the Ford Escape models from 2008 through 2010 in regards to the throttle body malfunctioning and causing the vehicles to accelerate and not being able to be stopped. There is a class action lawsuit where four companies were sued because of this and those vehicles models from the year 2008 through 2010 were recalled. And that is very important information in regards to the vehicle in question being a Ford Escape 2010. This information is very easily obtained just by pulling it up and you will see a class action lawsuit. Obviously, if it's a class action lawsuit, then it's pretty easy to... So what's your request, sir? My request is to find out if Officer Schultz knew to find out if prosecution knew that there was a recall on those vehicles. And in light of the fact that these vehicles were recalled because of this malfunctioning throttle body, I believe it's counts one through 73 to be dismissed. All right. What's the response from the state, if any? As Trooper Schultz testified during his examination, consistent with our research, there are no active recalls listed for the Ford Escape. NHTSA did do an investigation into allegedly defective Ford throttle bodies, which would have impacted this year. Basically, the electronic throttle body failures would have resulted in engine stall or surge while entering traffic from a stop position or while driving at highway speed, neither of which I believe occurred here. That does not prevent the brake from working. So if this had been activated on this car, which it was not, but if it had been and this defendant would have pushed down on the brake, it would have stopped the car. Although there may have been some cars who had this problem, the car that the defendant was driving on this day did not have that problem. That was testified during the, or the vehicle inspection. The defendant had the opportunity to cross-examine Inspector Schultz with regard to that. And again, in running the defendant's mom's VIN number through NHTSA, National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, there are for this particular VIN number, for this car that the defendant was driving, zero unrepaired recalls. So it's a Issue. I don't believe it's a mood issue. And I actually have, it should, the report should be 
in the mail room as we speak. I had everything sent over priority mail, the actual information about the class action lawsuit, the actual information about the recalls for those models, like I said, 2008 through 2010. Now, in all fairness, Your Honor, that's why I was asking for a, a Brady, Brady claim on this, seeing as how when vehicles are purchased from the manufacturer, they're still sold as is. There, there would be no way to know that there's anything malfunctioning with the vehicle until it actually happened. And seeing this class action lawsuit, no one would sue the Ford company if there weren't malfunctioning vehicles. There would be no class action lawsuit if these vehicles were not malfunctioning. And I believe with, with that, like I said, the information is easily obtainable. I should have the information in the mailroom right now that you can readily view this information about the class action lawsuit, about the recall. It wasn't just the 2010 model in question. It was 2008 through 2010. The information about the malfunctioning pertains strictly to the throttle body. Let me address your claim, sir. So not trying to cut you off. I don't need the specifics about a class action because as it relates to this case, the fact that there's a class action would not mean there's a Brady violation by the state. In fact, you even indicate it was readily known and something you were able to find out. I'd further note that you had a full and fair opportunity to cross-examine the inspector regarding his mechanical inspection. It's not new information. And more importantly, as it relates to this particular vehicle, based upon the testimony of Inspector Schultz, it's speculative as to whether this vehicle would be impacted, number one, by the class action, and number two, any throttle body problems. Because, again, there was a full inspection. That report was provided provided to you. I am aware that the ICF, I did receive an email. It's one page with what you said. It's, I have to turn my head. I got to figure out how to flip it. So give me a second. Just for the record, you're on. Hold on. Let me finish my record. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn because it's the only way I can read. It says, your ICF says the state's expert witness who did the inspection on the vehicle in this incident needs to be recalled. No later than Wednesday, I just learned of some information that is extremely vital. So I, I understand the information that you're providing me, but again, you had a full and fair opportunity to cross-examine this witness. This information was apparently well known. I'd also note the vehicles registered to your mother. And from my understanding of recalls, I think what is common knowledge is that a registered owner would receive information regarding the recalls and what to do. And presumably she would have provided that information to anyone operating that vehicle or taking care of it. We have none of that information before us by way of fact or even an offer of proof that even she received that information and did nothing with it or whether anyone else who operated that did anything with it or not. The bottom line is there is absolutely no Brady violation by the state. This is not the type of information they would have been required to turn over. And from my understanding and review of Exhibit 83, what's important to this case is that the mechanical inspection specifically looked at that issue nonetheless and found that as to this particular vehicle, there were no issues with that. That would have impacted the mechanical function during the incident in question. I'll accept the state's offer of proof as to what would have been the issues based upon the information provided. And again, without anything further from you by way of your offer of proof, I can make a finding, number one, that there's a Brady violation, and number two, that the information you seek to cross-examine him on would have any impact whatsoever. So I'll deny the request to dismiss the case, and I'll deny the request to recall this witness. Hey, you're, you're on it. Let, hold on. Let me have the state just make their statement. I'll give you the last word on it. Go ahead. The Inspector Schultz's mechanical inspection report was provided to the defense on April 29, 2022. I noted that when the defendant was cross-examining Inspector Schultz, he did have the report in front of him and it was questioning, asking questions directly related to information contained in that report. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. The, when you spoke to the owner of the vehicle, that's who gave me the information. My mother gave me the information of, of this. I didn't, I had no knowledge until she told me and that's how I came into the information and she was the one that said I'm going to send you all the information that you need so you can present it to the court so I, I didn't this I understand that sir this but wasn't your request is not timely so you have had this information for quite some time either through I counsel. did not have it for let some me make time. my record it just, either through counsel it was just told to me that's not what I'm saying you've had the information about this report for quite some time either through prior counsel or through um, all of the discovery that was turned over to you when you took
took over your representation of your own case. The fact that you have now learned this, it's a little bit too late. And I understand that may seem fair to you, but when I even when I consider the information that you're providing to me, it's it's speculative on your part as to whether there's any impact on this particular vehicle because of the inspection that was done. And you had a full and fair opportunity to cross-examine the inspector about information that was readily obtainable and researchable by you prior to the time that you cross-examined this witness. It was not really readily available for me to expect at the time. I don't have access to the internet, so how, how would I be able to... Mr. Brooks, you're telling uh, me your mother had that information. No, so, I'm and telling I'm gonna you trust she just told me this information. I have the phone calls to prove it. I understand that. I'm denying the request, sir. I I've made my decision. That. I expect that you respect the decision, at least no. as we're not going to debate it further. Yes. I now have the it ICF. Needs to be, it needs the one to be for the state addressed, to provide Your Honor. It to the state. Madam Clerk, to be I just gave that to you. All right. So, Mr. I respectfully Brooks, object. That, I respectfully object, Your Honor, and request a legal reconsideration of your ruling, Your Honor. Um, de it's denied. The request for reconsideration is denied. There's no legal basis for me to do that. I respectfully at this point. reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, we need to keep going. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling, Your Honor? I provided an oral ruling today. The record stands, sir. For the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law on this issue? Your request is denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal of this matter? I wouldn't be the one you would make that request to, sir. So I can't. For the record, may I move yes to stay no. these proceedings until the instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? That request is denied. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? The request is denied. Based on what law or fact, what, Your Honor? Any other requests, sir, I'd like to move on. Based on what law? There's no or legal fact. basis that you've stated for me to do that, sir. There has, it has been, Your Honor. The request is denied. The request is not a proper motion. It's, there's no legal support for the motion. There's no factual support for the motion. So it's denied. For the record, it appears that this court is acting in contempt of the law, Your Honor. Can you show me how or where this court is following the law of respect, respect in this matter? That's a very vague statement, sir. There's no legal relief that you're claiming. There's no motion before the court based in law or fact. So this court cannot address that last statement of yours. Your Honor, with all due respect, I would like a motion for finding a fact. Denied. Under what law and fact? I made Honor. an oral ruling, sir. There's no requirement. I do so in writing. So you're denying a legal, you're deny, denying a motion for finding a fact. I am. So how do I know what you're doing is legal, Your Honor? All right, Mr. Brooks, we're going to move forward. At this time, I want to... How do I know that this, this is legal, Your Honor? Can you show me that it's legal? Mr. Brooks, we're moving forward. Um, I mean, no, I have I to need give you, you advisements, sir, regarding your right you to, to testify. Do, I need to do your job without prejudice and without Mr. bias. Mr. Brooks has now interrupted me multiple times. He's failing to respect the court's oral rulings here today. It's something that he's done repeatedly throughout this trial. Mr. Brooks, I need to go through some advisements. Unless you have a witness to immediately call, I need to go through this particular discussion on the record with you regarding your right you don't, to testify. You don't need do you to have a through, witness to call, sir? You don't need call, to go through anything with me on record. You actually, to, I do so, actually, sir. That don't. is required by actually, law. Actually, you don't. You need to do your job as a public servant Mr. Brooks, and honor the oath that you I took. I need to go through these advisements, and if you're going to keep interrupting me, I will. you will forfeit your right to be present, and you so will you're be removed me to again. the next courtroom so that I can properly go through these advisements without being still, interrupted. And I still don't have to answer. I still don't have I still don't have to answer whether I'm in this court or not, so you're holding me in contempt yet again. Mr. Brooks, I've not held you in contempt. I've found that you have forfeited your right to be present by your conduct, which is one of the options available to this court under Illinois versus Allen, under State versus Vaughn. It's also referenced in State versus Anthony. So I am going to keep going, sir, despite your protestations. Your Honor, um, with all I need due you respect, to in not interrupt Allen, me. In this Illinois is another versus, interruption. In Illinois versus Allen. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate with you on I'm the meaning of Illinois versus I'm Allen. You are, have a debate. You are really advised that it continued. Illinois versus Allen. Mr. Brooks, you are advised that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be present during this next phase of the trial. Okay, but you saying that I'm I've said that multiple right. times. You I've given you multiple opportunities to stop me in interrupting contempt. me. You're holding me in contempt. Mr. Brooks, I'm not holding you in from contempt the for the second time here, and I've Your also Honor. repeated that. Your Honor, He's interrupting all, me yet again. Mr. Brooks, 
respect. I need you to stop talking. With all respect, in Illinois versus Allen. All right, Mr. Brooks continues to want to debate with me the meaning of Illinois versus Allen. It is a clear indication to this court to that he wants to disrupt these proceedings, even in a mild true. manner, tone That's of not voice. True. I'm, I've reminded I'm him to understand, Your Honor, because it doesn't. Civility. And Illinois one of the bedrocks doesn't. Is that Illinois he versus interrupt. Allen does not state. All right, I'm going to remove him to the next courtroom so that I can go through it does proper not advisements state. with him without being interrupted. It does not state the courtroom that you can be present from once he cameras. is over there. Again, it, it I'll make the appropriate that you can findings be when he is there. Cameras or that you could be. Yes, we're off the record. Or that you could be. Pre- okay, so I'll you're making a tacit agreement. Madam Clerk, might please get verification that the audio and video are working in the neighboring courtroom. All right, thank you. I do have verification. There are headphones on the table in front of Mr. Brooks should he choose to wear them. I see he's reading from a book at the moment. At some point today, I'll certainly invite him back over when I get through these advisements. Mr. Brooks, you have been muted. I will make that, put that on the record as well. I will unmute though and ask Mr. Brooks because you did not answer the question previously. Other than you potentially testifying on your behalf, do you have any other witnesses present at the courthouse to call today? I need an answer to that question, sir. That we haven't addressed when I was just over here, or since I've been over here, are we addressing subject matter jurisdiction? I'm going to mute him just for a second. No, I'm not going to address subject matter jurisdiction. This is a common ploy by Mr. Brooks. When I attempt to go through certain things with him, ask him questions, he div- tries to divert our attention away to subject matter jurisdiction. This court's position is there is subject matter jurisdiction, and I'll deny verbally and orally at this point his request to dismiss the case based on a lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Do you have any other witnesses other than yourself available at the courthouse to call this morning, meaning now? This is the uh, jurisdictional challenge right here. So are you going to address subject matter jurisdiction and prove it for the record or not? So I've asked Mr. Brooks twice now whether he has any witnesses to call other than himself. If you fail to answer that question, I will interpret your failure to answer that as a no, and you will lose the opportunity. You will forfeit the opportunity to call any other witnesses on your behalf other than yourself. So I will ask you one last time, do you have any other witnesses at the courthouse available to testify right now? Am I unmuted? You've been unmuted. You just said I was muted, so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if you muted me or not. Me muting you doesn't affect you being able to hear the court because yes, yes, uh, yes, that yes, only yes. mutes your yes. audio coming into this courtroom. I confirmed already well, that, audio to begin with. that is simply a misstatement. I confirmed with the bailiffs that the audio why, and visual were why working. Is my audio, why is my audio muted to begin with? Because you interrupt the court repeatedly. So I'm going to ask you uh, yet another way. You indicated last week that you would like to call your mom as a witness, Dawn Woods, provided with notice that the state would not be assisting with that in any way. You indicated when that was said that if you wanted your mom to testify, she would obey you and she would be here. Are you going to call Dawn Woods as a witness this morning, specifically now? He's been unmuted for a while now. We can obviously hear him. For the record, he's finally putting on hey. headphones. Is Dawn Woods in the courthouse available to testify right now? Do you hey, intend hey, to call hey, her? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mr. Brooks only puts on the headphones when he's in the other courtroom. He does not put them on when he's in here. The audio yeah, and the visual work just fine in that courtroom. When I'm, His, when, I'm in, when I'm in the actual courtroom, I can hear. I don't need to be muted. Mr. Brooks's statements that the audio doesn't work when I mute him is simply false. I, I didn't say nothing about the audio not working, so you need to stop lying on the record. I'm not lying on the record, sir. You I are lying on the record. All right, he is you getting, I'm going to mute him once again. He certainly does not seem to want to answer any of the questions this court has. I warned him that if he did not answer that question, he would forfeit his right to call additional witnesses other than perhaps himself. I'll find that he has forfeited his right to present and call any additional witnesses based upon his conduct. I would like to go through a number of advisements with Mr. Brooks regarding his right to testify. I will unmute him for that. 
He's unmuted. Mr. Brooks, I would like to go through with you your right to testify and your right not to testify. I will advise you that if you refuse to answer my questions, refuse to acknowledge me, you can forfeit your right to testify. Mr. Brooks, you need to be aware and are so advised that you have a constitutional right to testify. If you testify, sir, the state has the right to cross-examine you. That means to ask you questions after you give your initial testimony. Did you hear me advise you of no response by Mr. Brooks? Sir, you also have a constitutional right not to testify. If you decide not to testify, you are further advised that doing so cannot be used against you, and I would so advise the jury. Did you hear me advise you of that? Once again, no response by Mr. Brooks. The decision to testify is for you and you alone to make. Did you hear me say that? There's no response by Mr. Brooks. Have you taken any medication within the last 24 hours or any drugs or any alcohol? Not receiving a response to that. I'll make a finding that he has the ability and understand he can read, write, and understand the English language. You've been unmuted the entire time, sir. So what are you talking about? Is he talking about subject matter jurisdiction and how you're going to uh, verify it on record? So he did, record? he did not answer my question if the record's not clear about whether he's had any drugs, alcohol, or medication within the last 24 hours. Has anyone made any threats against you to influence your decision on whether to testify on your behalf in this trial? I believe he's fully able to hear this court at this time based upon how the audio is functioning in the other courtroom. He did not respond to that. Has anyone made any promises yeah, to you to influence your decision? You saying. So if you can hear me, I don't hear everything you're saying, and you know I don't hear everything you're saying, so cut the crap. Um, Mr. Brooks has interrupted with very dis disrespectful words at this moment. I believe that he is feigning his inability to hear and that he's done so throughout this case. There's absolutely no indication he puts the headphones on when he wants. He takes them off when he wants to. While in this courtroom, he hasn't had them on. He's only used them while in the other courtroom. But again, I've confirmed multiple times that the audio is loud and clear. Um, and his statements that he can't hear, his statements that when I mute his audio, that it mutes his audio are simply... So Mr. Brooks, have unmuted. you made... Am I, still, am I still unmuted? You are, sir. And I'll make a so, record that per so the lieutenant you, over in the other courtroom, the volume is two to three to times louder than it is in this saying, courtroom. You need to stop making false records saying that I said I can't hear you at all. I said I have trouble hearing you when I'm over here. That's what I said. So I would appreciate it if you would make the record clear and correct. Clearly, he heard me say that for him to make that distinguishing yeah, I'm statement. Sitting, I'm sitting right so, here. Don't you see me looking all up to the, to the microphone so you can hear me? I don't have or an issue you hear hearing you at all, right sir. Here? Can you hear me when I'm right here? I can. Have what you made a decision? What about this courtroom? Have you made a decision to testify in this case? No. Have you made a decision to testify? I will ask you again, sir. Have you made a decision to testify in this case? Have you made a decision to address subject matter jurisdiction? Have you made a decision to be, to be impartial? To answer what your name is? To answer if you have a claim against me? Or I would mute him for the moment just because, once again, he's attempting to divert away from what this court needs to do by going through the proper colloquy with him regarding his right to testify. I will ask him for a third time with the understanding that if he fails to answer the question in the affirmative, I will interpret his failure to respond as a no and that he is not going to testify. Once again, I am unmuting him. Have you made a decision on whether to testify in this case? There's no response by Mr. Brooks. I will ask it yet another way. Do you want to testify on your behalf in this am I, am case? I Yes, you have been. Sir, do you want to testify? How long have I been on duty? Sir, do you want to testify in this case? You just said you when I had the headphones on just a minute ago. You just said you was mute. So when have I become on duty? Or, or did you even mute me in the first place? I'm asking you one last time. You do you want to testify? Because you, I haven't heard nothing that you asked. So how are you going to ask me something and then, take, and then just answer for me? Do you want you to testify? All right, I'm you going to answer. answer. I'm going to you move him again. Word. Again, it's this. It is very clear to this court that he uses the statement that I can't, that he can't hear, as a means to delay. It's a distraction. It's very evident that he hears this court. This court 
as I indicated earlier, is tasked with the duty to ensure that there is efficient and effective presentation of relevant and probative evidence in this case. This court is attempting to go through the needed colloquy with Mr. Brooks, and he at all times during this colloquy has refused to answer simple questions. But I must establish these ground rules that he must answer these questions um, in order for this court to make the appropriate findings. Without him providing answers, um, this court is left with no choice but to find that he is forfeiting his right to testify on his own behalf. The simple requirement that he answer questions is required, frankly, due to the defendant's prior conduct throughout this trial, his repeated defiance, his repeated outbursts, his repeated failure to follow simple rules of courtesy and decorum, his repeated interruptions of this court, and the, this court having to repeatedly remove him to the neighboring courtroom and making findings that he has forfeited his right to be present. This court will find that he has forfeited his right to testify. I've now made a much more full record of what is at stake, and I will give Mr. Brooks an opportunity again to go through the colloquy with the court regarding his right to testify. I am unmuting him and will attempt to go through this procedure once again. So Mr. Brooks, you are unmuted. You have been for about a minute. I want to go through the questions again. Are you aware that you have a constitutional right to testify? Mr. Brooks, are you aware that you have the constitutional right to testify? Are you aware that you're practicing law Mr. Brooks, do you understand and are aware that you have a constitutional right not to testify? I don't understand, no. Are you aware that you have a constitutional right not to testify? I don't understand, and I'm not aware, so why are you asking me questions? All right, I'll, I'll do this another way, sir. Sir, you are advised that you have a constitutional right to testify and that if you choose to testify, that you would be subject to cross-examination by the state. Did you hear me say I, that? I don't hear you say anything. I don't understand what you're asking. I don't he understand. is willfully choosing not to answer that. Sir, you, you, you are also advised that you have a constitutional right word. not to testify. You mean, Your Honor, with all respect, you've been, you've been trying Did to you hear me say that? Questions, sir. I, didn't hear, I didn't hear you ask me anything. Sir, stop talking and I'll ask it again. Can you, can you ask me to stop talking? And I'm asking you to stop interrupting me so that you can hear the questions. Even though I fully believe you hear them, I will attempt to do this one headphones. last time. Oh, yeah, I can hear them. I got the headphones on. All right, then let's... Can see that? Once again, Mr. Brooks is being disrespectful. He is being blurting out information. Saying, saying he reverts fact. back to subject matter jurisdiction. He accuses fact. this court of not honoring its oath. He just accused me of practicing law that? without a license. Again, yeah. all attempts no, say, to deflect away. I'm going to mute him law. once again. I, this court has simply tried to no avail to get Mr. Brooks to answer simple questions throughout this trial. Mr. Brooks has repeatedly accused this court of violating his First Amendment rights of free speech. I've told him repeatedly his First Amendment free speech rights are not unfettered. This court is not making an arbitrary decision. The decision I make here today is, in my opinion, uh, proportionate to the conduct demonstrated by Mr. Brooks throughout this trial and specifically specifically today based upon his failure to even engage the court in a simple colloquy regarding his right to testify and his right not to testify. He was repeatedly warned that the failure to answer the questions would be taken as no, meaning the specific question, have you made a decision, and is for all of those reasons that this court will make a finding he has forfeited his right to testify. I would like Mr. Brooks to be brought back over so that he is present in the courtroom when the court advises the jury that the defense is resting. I realize that will be over his objection. I'd ask that he honor that. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to unmute you. If you can pledge to this court that you will honor that ruling and that you won't challenge that directly in the presence of the jury, I will bring you back over for that. Are you willing to make that pledge, sir? Make what pledge? I'm not making no pledge. Sir, you... You're trying, you, you're trying to... You're trying to... You asked me a question, now I can't answer. Yeah, no, go ahead, answer. You're trying to coerce me into violating my right to remain silent. How can, how can you... How can you coerce me into my right to remain silent? So you're not going to protect my constitutional right? Because I didn't answer nothing that you was trying to ask me before when I had the headphones on. And you can't make a decision for me. You can't do that. You're violating my constitutional right. If you'd like to testify, then you need to simply go through the colloquy with this court, which I've given you three opportunities well, to do, and I'm you have decided you, not to. When I know, you can't tell me what I decided to do. 
because I didn't decide to do or not do anything. Are you willing to? Your Honor, by law, you cannot coerce me. I'm not coercing you, sir. Well, you, you're making a decision for me based on something that I did not say myself. Last That's Friday, I specifically directed your attention to State versus Anthony. I, I discussed very briefly at the end of the day on Friday the case law that is relevant on right. this topic, including State versus Friday. Anthony, Rock versus Arkansas, and Chambers versus Mississippi, to specifically put you on notice. Did you, did you recall what was going on Friday? Mr. Brooks, Friday. I'm going to mute him again. I'm, I'm not going to have a debate. I've made a finding. I've given him yet another opportunity. If he's willing to go through the colloquy with the court, he wants to challenge me instead in saying he doesn't consent. His lack of consent to this entire procedure is noted for the record. I'm going to leave him in the other courtroom. The jury's going to be brought out and he will remain muted and I will simply advise them as I have throughout this case that he's appearing from another courtroom and that his appearance from the other courtroom should not in any way be held against him. But if at any point in time he wants to come back over, he needs to advise the bailiffs. Let's have the jury brought out. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. I will declare the evidentiary phase of this trial concluded. I'm going to excuse the jury for the remainder of the day so that the parties and I go through all of the jury instructions. I'll rise for the jury. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess. On the record, appearances are as they were before. The record should reflect that Mr. Brooks continues to appear from the other courtroom. I would like to make a record regarding the audio and visual from the other courtroom. Deputy Kibler, if you could take the witness stand. Were you present in courtroom 20 this morning with Mr. Brooks? I was. Did you have any difficulty hearing the court? I did not. Mr. Brooks, you are unmuted. Do you have any questions for this deputy? No. You may step down. All right, then I'm going to have Zach Tremaine also take the witness stand. Were you in courtroom 20 this morning following Mr. Brooks being taken to that courtroom? Only temporarily. Can you tell me what we're looking at? It is our AV control panel, so you push buttons on it and actions happen in the courtroom, AV related. At that time of the photo, my phone is registering 67.3 decibels. Mr. Brooks, any questions for this witness? Do you know anything about the hearing when someone has hearing loss in, in, in any of their ears? I do not. So it would be fair to say you don't know if I can hear everything good from this courtroom? I can tell you what the readout of the room is. Beyond that, I don't know. I can't see what photo that everybody else is in there seeing that was supposedly supposed to be made an exhibit. I have not viewed that, so I don't know what's being referred to when you refer to the picture. I can have that up momentarily. Fair enough. So give me a moment. For the moment, we'll print it in black and white so you have it until I can get the zoom up. All right, now the court is sharing screen and the image is being displayed. Yeah, Any questions regarding that then? Now, I need to get a copy of the jury instructions. They were quite lengthy. I, the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks was provided with a written copy. It's 107 pages. I accept the value, return the value, document. That's if I'm not muted. You're not muted. I also would like to again ask the subject matter jurisdiction to prove another record. Your request is denied. That's yet to be verified. It has yet to be verified. It's denied without further hearing right. or consideration. I was just told the evidentiary phase is supposed to be closed. How come I haven't been able to my evidence into the record as I've asked numerous times on the record to be able to do? I, I said I have numerous documents that needed to go into the record. Why have they not been permitted to be made evidence? I didn't I didn't uh, rest my case, so I don't know why that's being told. And I haven't I have yet to be able to offer my exhibits into the record for evidence. How how is that so, Your Honor? So the court did declare the evidentiary phase of this trial closed. I specifically found that you forfeited your right to present any further evidence or testimony uh, when you failed to answer my questions regarding the calling of witnesses. And then I also declared that you forfeited your right to testify. Specifically as it relates to your trial filing, sir, I would note that all evidence in a trial must be proper, it must be probative, it must be relevant, and it must follow all rules of procedure and all rules of evidence. To the extent that you wrote all of those documents, sir, that would be here 
hearsay. And for that reason, I'm denying your request to make them part of the record. They, they, were, not, they were not hearsay, Your Honor. I did what you told me to do. You told me, since I was representing myself pro per, that I had to write everything out and present it to the court. So that's not I'm what right. I said. You're misquoting me. But in any event, I'm no, denying your you request. Said. Um, I said, so you're saying that I have... So you're saying that I have no right to present evidence and to have exhibits as the state's been able to do. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to my, have a debate about this now. Me, I have, you, I got a mute once again. Right? So, Mr. Brooks, I have muted you because I declared the evidentiary phase of this trial closed. It is not true that I advised him that any filing would become evidence. That is simply false. I told him if he wanted to present motions should be written down and she be, should be based in law and fact and request specific relief. I'm well aware that previously he has referenced he would like his filings made exhibits. I've reviewed those filings. There's nothing relevant, nothing probative, or the information contained therein is hearsay. And he clearly just took the entire packet of jury instructions and put them, I don't know what's under the table, if it's a garbage can or if he just simply put them under the table, but they are no longer in front of him. I will, however, unmute him so that we can get his feedback regarding jury instructions. It's typically a back and forth. We'll go through them and uh, I'll ask the parties whether there are any instructions they believe should be included and we'll have a discussion on that and then we'll talk about whether any of the instructions that are in here need to be modified in any way, taken out, edited, etc. Right, you're unmuted now, but as long as, but you have to not interrupt. Uh, you can't you can't, I'm not trying to interrupt, but how can you deny me the chance to put on the adequate defense by saying nothing that you told me to do can be presented into evidence? So you, you, you filed them. You filed everything that I gave to you. You right, filed. Mr. Brooks, I'm and going to mute sudden, you because this is not relevant at this time. It is. He, he's raised tone of voice. He's very animated. He threw the jury instructions on the floor. I'll unmute him again, but it, but you are advised, sir, you need to be proper. You need to not interrupt, and you need to stay on task, which is we're discussing jury instructions, not other evidence, not subject matter jurisdiction, not your belief that I told you to file things a certain way. We are now discussing jury instruction. So once again, I'll unmute him to see if he can follow these simple rules. Uh, we, you need to tell me why I can't present evidence. How can you deny me the fact? How can you deny me my right to present evidence? Right. I'll mute you him once you. again because he wants to continue. And again, I understand he's upset. I understand that. He has himself to blame. Mr. Brooks, do you acknowledge receipt? I believe you did by acknowledging it previously, but do you acknowledge receipt of the draft of the final jury instructions? I, I acknowledge nothing and I don't and I don't acknowledge anything now. I have not received anything. I would ask the bailiff to I pick up the receive. documents from the floor and put them in front of him. And we're, I'm not I don't I'm not presenting it to nothing I don't give my consent to. You can't deny me the right to put on the defense. How can you tell me when I, I just say it I'm going to read it once times. again because, again, I understand he's upset. If the bailiff could confirm, well, he put him on top, he put him on the floor. That's his right. I'll advise Mr. Brooks without a specific waiver of his right to be present, even if it's from the remote courtroom, he's going to remain in that courtroom. Mr. Brooks, I know you are still muted by me, but I know the audio is working, but I would ask you to specifically advise if there are any specific jury instructions that you are asking be read to the jury. Let's go through the list and then we'll get the defendant's responses if he would like to give us those. On page 65 of 107, which is the 70, the preliminary instruction, defendant proceeding pro se, there's the standard paragraph, which is the first paragraph listed under this instruction, and then there's an additional paragraph. We are going to object to that additional paragraph. I think it highlights the defendant's bad behavior, so I'd ask that that be taken out. Right, let me turn to Mr. Brooks just to get to whether he has any, his list. I'm not asking for a response yet, Mr. Brooks. I'm, what I'm asking you for is whether you have any requests 
for jury instructions, or in your review, you think anything needs to be changed, deleted, <coughs> added, etc. I know I'd ask that it be put in writing, but I'll also give you this opportunity to verbally advise the court and make your requests. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? I would note he put two boxes right in front of where he's seated, so I can't presently see his face. I see his jacket is off, so I can see the outline of his arms, and I can see the jacket on the back of his chair. He is unmuted. I've confirmed previously regarding the audio working, and I will just ask him a second time, sir, do you have any requests as relates to the draft packet of jury instructions, whether that be any additions, corrections, edits, or deletions. And Your Honor, would it be possible for the bailiffs to just move the boxes off the table so yes, we can see? Yes, I think see? that's fair. I'm going to advise the bailiff to remove the box so I can see Mr. Brooks. I don't know what he's doing behind there. He has quieted down. He hasn't. I haven't heard him in a while. If you could move the second one because it can interfere with the microphone as well. And the third. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you for a third time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Any requests for instructions that aren't included that you believe should be included? Any edits or deletions from the packet? that has been provided to you. Hey, why, why you to move my body? Because I couldn't see you, sir. Well, I've you asked you twice now, and I'll ask you a third time, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Any additions, deletions, edits, or otherwise? Hey, man, you, you don't gotta talk to me like that. Do you have any requests? First of all, first of all. Related what? to the jury instructions, sir. Man, yeah, yeah I, got, I got requests. It, it ain't like they gonna be honored, though. Cause as that's it not, relates that's to the jury fun. instructions, yeah, sir, what are you- I heard right? what the hell you said. Man. Well, Mr. Brooks, that was very disrespectful. Yeah, and you and I've been getting disrespected since the beginning of this whole process. So welcome to the club. Mr. Brooks, do you have any I'm requests? I'm tired of my being around here too. I'm tired of it too. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Sir, I understand you may be upset, and I, I really do, no, but I've made my determinations. Nothing. You don't understand nothing. You don't understand anything, Your Honor. You don't. We are, you, you, I'm going to mute him again because he's not answering the questions that I'm very clearly asking him, and I've given him five opportunities. Mr. Brooks, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? I'll unmute you for that answer. I can't hear anything. Mr. Brooks, I know he, the audio is turned up. I believe you can hear me. You've chosen not to put the headphones on. That's your choice. My final question to you, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? I just told you, am I muted? Am I muted? No. I just told you, I don't know how many times, I can't hear everything you say. Then you should put the headphones on. What about that, don't you understand? Don't you understand? Do you see headphones? You can see everything. You can see boxes. Have, have you asked for headphones to be provided, sir? I should have to ask him. I asked for my boxes to be moved. I believe they took them away previously because you were so agitated they were perhaps afraid you might break yeah, them. Yeah, I'm still agitated. I ain't gonna stop being agitated. That ain't gonna stop sitting here and do everything you're doing. And think you gonna, and think God don't see what you're doing? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mr. Brooks, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Yeah, I, I, I can hear what you're saying. You just told me you didn't. So which one is yeah, it? Yeah, I got the hair on. You can't see that? What are your requests as it relates? That? What are your requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? Man, don't, don't try to come with this whole little image of oh, sir. Now it's all this sir and all this. I'm going to get where I'm going. Try to put it on this little act like you so worried about what's going on with me. You don't give a damn. Never did. Mr. Brooks, you're being disrespectful again. You being disrespectful. You being disrespectful. You being disrespectful. You being, you're being disrespectful. I need to know what your position is regarding regarding the jury instructions, and I need to know it now. What you mean? Who you, who, you talk, who you talking to? I'm talking to you. I need to know whether you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir. Yeah, first of all, first of all, first of all, why am I charged with two bail jumping when I was already charged in Milwaukee for the same bail jumping? That's double jeopardy. That's not double jeopardy. Your objection is noted. It's jeopardy. overruled. 
It, it, it is, it is double jeopardy. How you gonna charge me with the same charge that I'm already charged with? You can't do that. The Fifth Amendment says, the Fifth Amendment says that you can't place somebody in jeopardy of life and limb twice. I'm already charged with the same count in Milwaukee. This is for the same case. It's the same bail jumping charge. So how am I charged with that here? Sir, I'm not gonna provide okay. a legal explanation other than to say I've reviewed okay. that. Okay. Your objection is noted, but the jury will be instructed regarding the bail jumping. Thing. It can't be because that's double jeopardy. Under the law, if, if two if two charges are identical in nature, you cannot you cannot place me in jeopardy of life and limb twice. Can't do that. The what's same your case, next? The same case number. What's your what's your request? Next request, sir. I'm noting your objection. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm trying to talk. Can I get it out? You always want me to not interrupt you, but you always find a way to talk over me. I understand your position. You I'm saying it's overruled. You always want respect. You always want respect because I don't want to get it. I'm charged with the same bail jumping charge here that I've already been charged with. That is double jeopardy. You can't charge me for the same exact bail jumping that I'm already charged with. <laughs> that I was charged with before I even, before this even came about. Sir, the bail jumping charges in Waukesha County are based upon your violating your bail while in Waukesha County by driving through the Christmas parade and allegedly killing six people and injuring 61 others. Okay. Th that's the distinction. Again, again there, there's, there is no distinction. It's the same charge. It's the same it's offense. It doesn't mean it's the same it's factual it's basis, it's sir. He is not charged with bail jumping data violation of November 21. 21 in Milwaukee County anywhere. Further, the double jeopardy prohibition would prevent him from being convicted twice, not charged twice. All right, so we've addressed that, sir. What's What other requests do you have as it relates to the jury instructions? Uh, I, I want to I wanna know why I'm even charged twice with the same thing. You can't charge me in pursuant to a, 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 a case in Milwaukee that I'm already charged with bail jumping. I'm already charged with bail jumping for that already. So you can't you can't essentially say, oh, well, because you were already on bail, we're gonna charge you. It's a different date of violation, sir. The conduct yeah, for the bail jumping you know, is related to the allegation that you committed a new crime in Waukesha County while out on bond from the Milwaukee County case. Yeah, but I'm referring to the first bail jumping count. The first I'm not referring to both of them. I'm referring to one of them. My understanding, sir, is there's different dates of violations as it relates to that. So I've noted your objection now repeatedly. I understand it. Your request to, I guess, dismiss the bail jumping counts are denied. I didn't say nothing about counts. I said one. Whether it's one am count not, or both, it's being, denied. Am I not being understood? You can't charge me with the same charge twice. You can't. It's two separate of, uh, cases, sir. There's Isn't two... That is it that nine? Is it that nine seventy one point two three? Is it that the statute that refers to the double? All right, sir. I'm not going to have an argument. Anybody? This isn't fruitful. I you're, I understand what you're saying. You're saying you, there shouldn't be two counts of bail jumping. You believe it's double it jeopardy. I disagree with charged. that. They're I'm separate. Already charged with it. I'm already charged with it, though. We're, this is a circular argument, sir. Charge. It doesn't change the fact that, from my perspective, the two bail jumping counts are going to proceed forward. There's been sufficient evidence presented to warrant the jury being instructed. What other what other what other requests do you have, sir? Don't talk over me. Don't 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 talk over me. Just like you don't want me to talk over you. Just like you don't want me to talk over you. Just like you don't. Mr. Brooks, what other requests do you have? I just asked you. I just asked not to talk over you. You've been making your record the whole time you've been over there. You had me muted. I didn't see no I didn't see no requests over there. I didn't write nothing to go over there. I let you do what you was doing, no matter how egregious and biased it is. I'll let you do what you was doing. Because we both know that what you're doing is not right. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to refocus your attention to the jury instructions. Okay. All of your objections are noted. I understand that. If you can't answer my question, I'm going to move on. Okay. I haven't given you consent. Just like All right. I'm, I'm going to mute him right. once again. He Just refuses to answer simple questions regarding the if he has any requests. He just made an argument regarding the bail jumping, so clearly he has an understanding about the law as it relates to that. It may be a mis misunderstanding about the law and double jeopardy, but he made a, an argument. I've denied it. I'd like to know if he has any other requests. If he can stay on topic, I'll unmute and mute. I will unmute him again and 
he can tell me the list just like the state went through a list. I need to get through their list. I'm asking you to list out all your requests and then I will take each one up in turn. So here is your opportunity to give me your other requests. Not debate with me about prior ruling. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Don't, 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 don't sit up here and try to play no game talking about you giving somebody an opportunity that you haven't gave me an opportunity to properly defend myself and put, put evidence, put stuff into evidence, which I've asked you repeatedly to do before we even got to the front. You told me we wasn't in the evidentiary phase. Mr. Brooks, do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions? This is probably the 10th or so time I've asked you this question. No, no it's not. No, it's not. So please stop being incorrect, Your Honor. Please, please stop. Please Do you have stop. any additional requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Yes. Oh. That, that first uh, count 74 bill jumping needs to be dismissed. You can't charge me with two things. You can't charge me with the same charge twice. All right, I've made a note of that. Either, What's the next either, issue? Either one county going to charge me with it or y'all, but it can't be both. It's the same. It's pursuant to the same exact thing that I was going to build. The same exact thing. The same exact case. So why are we giving the jury instructions on two cases from another county? I've made a and note of that. What other what other and requests do you have? Man, this is ridiculous. So I'm not I'm not I'm not even able I'm not even able to adequately defend myself, present evidence, do anything, because everything I say is gonna be found a reason for it not to be done. What are we doing here, Your Honor? What, what, what is the Mr. Brooks? Why should I be here when I've made a note of your request as to count seventy four? Do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Why are we why are we even having jury instructions? Why do I gotta why do I have to even sit here in this courtroom at because everything you been doing, you've been doing without my consent anyway, so you're gonna find a way to do this without my consent. So why do I need to be here for your objection for lack of consent is noted for the record. Okay, yeah. Any you, any you, other requests, you sir? You talk a good game. You talk a good game to save yourself enough space. But everything I put up that has no merit in your court, none. All right. I've asked him many, many, many times. I've advised him, and I'll advise him once again. If he fails to answer the question, I'm moving on. Do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? You can't, you can't move on because I haven't given you consent to it. All right, he did not answer. So I'm muting him again. I The only request that he has made as it relates to the jury instructions as he pounded his fist once again, raised his voice. Um, I understand, I really do, that he's upset with my decision to cut off his ability to present a defense, but that decision was made based on his conduct and his conduct alone. I'll make a note of that. We also, I don't believe I saw the jury's view instruction either. I don't, I mean, that was given to them at the time. I I don't know that it needs to be reread, but I think we need to consider that as well. And that was my version of 152. So as it relates to this, the state is asking that I simply, I had previously advised the jury with another paragraph that I was contemplating including, even if I took out that big paragraph that just said, at times Mr. Brooks has appeared from another courtroom, this must not influence your verdict in any manner. What's the state's position on including that, but taking out the paragraph you request to be taken out? That's fine. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on that? Which is, uh, so... Jury instruction 70 has to do with the defendant proceeding pro se. The pattern instruction would be basically the first paragraph. I need the bailiffs to move the boxes away from his face. I need to be able to see him. He can keep them on the table, but they need to be moved off to the side. And if he does it one more time, then I will instruct the bailiffs to take the boxes away. Those are trial prep materials. If there's something in those materials related to jury instructions, he's in, he should take those out now. Otherwise, they need to be moved away from the microphones and away from, from blocking his face. I'm not putting them here. I'm not putting them here. You can't see me. I'm putting them here for a reason. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on the verbiage of jury instruction no, 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 70 no, on page no 65? No, ask me no question. Are you, are you my accuser? Are you my accuser, Your Honor? All right, he's choosing not to answer, so I'll mute him again. It's unfortunate that he's deciding not to participate in this. 172 circumstantial evidence flight concealment. I believe is appropriate given the evidence that has been received during this case. Yes, sir. Am I unmuted? You have been. Am I unmuted? You are. So how long before you mute? As soon as I say something? Depends on what you say, how you say it, and if it's responsive to what we're doing. Why do I have to be responsive to what, to what you guys are doing? Nothing, nothing I say even matters at this point. So what's the point of me being responsive? 
you can't make decisions for me. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to mute you unless you can participate in what we're doing, which is discussing the jury instructions. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to tell the jury the truth. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell them what hasn't been told to me. I haven't been able Mr. to Brooks, to as a, I'm going to mute you because we're trying to discuss the jury instructions, not what you're going to say during your closing argument. I will get to that later. I believe that covers all of the issues that were raised by the parties then. You are. I'll give you one final opportunity to tell me if you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir. What you mean you give me one final thing? I didn't consent to nothing that y'all been talking about. And I say y'all because I haven't been participating in none of that. I understand, I sir. Your objection's on. noted. Your lack of consent is noted. Okay, I don't see what's going on in here. So how's decisions being made without me being able to consent to it? Sir, you forfeited your right to be present in this courtroom by your conduct, and you have not no, requested actually, to come back. Actually, actually, you took a, a, a break. So let's let's make sure the record is correct. You took a ten-minute break. I did. At which time? At which time I was brought back into this courtroom? I was advised you wanted to stay, sir. Okay, and you've you, you been you've been uh forcing me to come over here from the get go. Why couldn't you force me to come back over here where I'm supposed to be at? Sir, you, my understanding is you requested to stay in the other courtroom. I thought I put that on the record at the beginning. If I did not, I'll put make that part of the record now. I was advised by the bailiffs that you were requesting to stay in that courtroom. I certainly advised you prior to that that if there was a time you wanted to come back in, all you needed to do was ask. You've done that previously. Yeah, but and during, and even, even during this time, though, you've been incredibly disruptive. During, I mean, at one point you were muted for an extended period of time and you were yelling so loud, sir, we could hear you in this courtroom. I couldn't decipher what you were saying and I was also made aware that another branch could hear you. So you were, you continued okay, your disruptive fine. behavior. That's fine because at the end of the day, I should be heard. I have this first amendment right to be heard. So if I'm going to be constantly muted, the only way for me to be heard is for me to raise my voice. Mr. Brooks, one final time, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Otherwise, I'm going to improve them. I'm going to take a break, and then we'll come back in the afternoon to go over verdict forms. I didn't answer yes or no, so how do you consent to anything without me answering the question? Are you going to answer the question, sir? You can't, but you can't force me to do it. You can't. You can't just say, I'm going to do this. Because sir, but you also this. can't stall the proceedings by failing to answer. I didn't, I didn't try to stall the proceedings. You don't want to help me in contempt. I never you held you in contempt. contempt. All right, I'm going to mute him once again because he refuses to answer a very simple question. All right, we are in recess until 1 o'clock. All right, we are back on the record. It is 101 p.m. State versus Brooks. Appearances are as they were before. I would note I have instructed, and Mr. Brooks is present in this courtroom prior to the I understand your objections noted. if you would like to go back to the other courtroom sir you may but that is a choice that you would be making I am not requiring you I'm not forcing you at this time so you're not holding me in contempt I am not requiring you or forcing you to go into the other courtroom it is a new part of the day I thought it appropriate to have you brought here why? And only if you forfeit your right by conduct will I put you back in the other room. So you don't address subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Are you going to state it on the record? I'm declining to address that on the record for the reasons I've previously provided to you, not the least of which is I have addressed that by way of a written decision. And it, and it hasn't been proven for the record. You your objection is noted. Record. Can I go back in the other courtroom? Because I'm, I'm not going to do this with you. I'm not. Mr. Brooks, I do want to go over we don't the have, jury instructions. I don't, I don't understand the, the jury instructions. I don't understand anything that's in these proceedings. And I'm not going to participate in, in something that I don't understand. That's your choice, sir. May I please go back into the other courtroom? You can. Based upon your choice and your request, I'll make a finding that he's forfeiting his right to be present in this I didn't forfeit courtroom. anything. I asked. I understand you, Sorry, asked, but I, I feel it's important anything. to also make a finding based upon your conduct. Based upon what conduct? Me asking? Are you willing to 
expressly waive that right on the record right I'm now? Gonna, I'm not going to expressively waive anything. Are you willing to I'm, I'm engage in a colloquy regarding your right to be present I in a not. knowing and intelligent and voluntary waiver of that right? I am not going to consent to anything that I don't understand, and I will not answer any questions that I don't understand. I'm merely making a request to not be present in each proceeding. And to be in the other courtroom. Again, as I've stated numerous times now for the record, I will not answer or comply with anything I do not understand. I'm not making a voluntary waivery of anything. Are you willing to be, let me rephrase that, if I have you stay in this courtroom, are you willing to follow the rules of decorum and courtesy? I do not understand the question you are asking. Are you willing to not interrupt the proceedings with disruptive behavior? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. Well, given that he won't answer the questions directly, for now he is to remain in this courtroom. I'm requesting to not be in this courtroom. But you won't go through, you won't answer my questions regarding that, sir. I did. I, I told you I don't understand. That's not answering the question, sir. You asked me a question, I answered it. I don't understand. How can I ask, how can I answer something that I do not understand, Your Honor? Let me start with the jury instruction. You'll start with, one you I would start like with subject to. matter jurisdiction? No, I declare find that already, sir. I'm not going to address under that what further. Law, under what lawful law? Sir, please do not interrupt me again with the topic of subject matter jurisdiction or you run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom. Then let me go into other courtroom then. Are you willing to engage in a discussion about that? I need to make an I appropriate just, record. I just told you that I don't understand the questions you're asking. What do you want me to do? I can't answer something I don't understand. I believe you're choosing not to answer them, You can sir. believe what you want to believe. I, I believe that that you hide the stuff from the jury. I believe you won't. You're, you haven't been impartial or fair. You haven't let me even enter anything into evidence, which is my right to do so. Your but it doesn't matter what we believe, sir. Your Honor. I'm, I'm merely stating a request to not be present for these proceedings. I cannot answer sir, the questions it, you are asking me because I don't understand them. You understand your right to be present in the courtroom. Are you telling me you I don't understand, understand anything? Right? I don't. I do. Nope. I don't understand. Nope. Then you're gonna stay here for now. And under what lawful law? You can't for You can't force me to stay somewhere that I'm making a request not to. You can't you can't make me understand. You can't make me, you can't force me to understand what I don't understand. You can't force that. I need to address one of the jury instructions, number 315. So your honor, I'm trying to make a request to not be present in these matters without disrupting the courtroom, as you say that I do, and over talking you, as you state that I do. I'm making a request merely to not be present for these proceedings. Obviously, I'm not needed because <clears throat> every decision that's been made here today has been made without my consent. That's clearly telling me that I'm not needed. I have never consented to anything that's going on here today. I haven't even been allowed to present any evidence, which is something that I stated weeks ago. Weeks. You already knew, Your Honor, that I wanted things to present into evidence. I've asked numerous times for that and have been denied. And, and I don't understand why why I'm not being able to adequately defend myself. You're, in your words, you're not being allowed to adequately defend yourself based upon your conduct in this courtroom and throughout these proceedings and your unwillingness to follow the simple rules of decorum, courtesy, procedure, rules of evidence. You refuse to answer a variety of questions this morning when this court went through the, or attempted to go through the colloquy with you regarding your right to testify and your right not to testify. And because of that, and be based on the case law that I cited this morning, I made a finding that you forfeited your right to present further testimony and evidence through other witnesses, and then you forfeited your right to testify in your behalf. I'm not going to revisit those, sir. I'm not asking you to revisit them, but I'm just there. They weren't. They weren't correct. I understand you will because disagree I, with I that. never consented to it, and I never answered something. I understand. And you I did just not stated the reason that. why I didn't answer because I don't understand. You cannot force me to understand what you're asking me. Sir, I could not even get through the advisement. You wouldn't even listen. You talked over me repeatedly. Was that from the other courtroom or in here? Because I've been over there all morning. To the place that you are requesting to go back to, right? You you sent me into the other courtroom. You're right, I did. Right. So I've been over there all morning. With an adequate audio and visual system I connecting mean, the two courtrooms. Your functional you're, equivalent to your equivalent to your equivalent is adequate. But to mine is not. 
not. Seeing as how you always state Illinois versus Allen. You always state that. You always state that. But it never it never refers to a fourth option that you refer to. It never Mr. refers Bruce, I'm to I'm not going to debate this with you. If you continue to bring up subject matter jurisdiction, Illinois I didn't bring Allen, up subject the matter decisions jurisdiction. that I made earlier, I'm trying to figure out why I'm being held in contempt. you are frustrating the purposes of this hearing I'm trying to right figure now, out why I'm being held in contempt. Which is to finalize the jury instruction I, and the verdict form. Your Honor, I'm merely trying to understand why I went. You hold me in contempt. I never held you in contempt, sir. You, you attempted to. Nope. You've never attempted no. to hold me in, in contempt. No, sir. There. I Again, I'm not going to revisit all of these issues. When I asked you where you hold Are me in contempt, you said civil. Are you going to respect the decisions that I've made? They're, they're not, I'm they're not, not interrupting They're not me. correct decisions, Your Honor. I understand that. You'll I can't answer. You asked me questions. You asked me questions. I didn't answer them based on my understanding. How can you force me to understand what you're asking me if I don't? And then you and then you still make a finding based on that. How How is that lawful law? Mr. Brooks, I stand behind the record that I've made today. And that's fine. I'm not just, I'm and not, I'm advising I'm not you arguing that with you about what you ruled. I'm saying how me. can you do that without my consent? You can Continue to raise issues that I've that's, already That's a addressed. violation of my civil rights. If you continue to raise these issues, sir, and thwart the purpose of this court, which is to finalize the jury instruction and the verdict forms, you will forfeit your right to be present in the courtroom, and you will appear from the other courtroom. Okay. Absent, you, I and know you've requested I just, to I be just there. Made a, I made a request for the moment we walked in here to not be present for these proceedings, but yet but still. But you also won't have a dialogue with me about your understanding of what Because it's, my, that it's my Fifth Amendment right. I'm exercising my rights that not reserved from the moment we walked in here this morning. You can't for you can't force that. You can't force me. You can't force me to do anything. Actually, no, you're right. But I can make certain findings you, that you forfeit rights you that can't, you have and, based and, upon and your based conduct. on what lawful law you're under. I've cited the law this morning. All right, I am Illinois on, versus Allen. Right? I am that I can on, be present from another courtroom I need if to I forfeit my right. Instruction three one five. Um, your Honor, I, I don't. I don't understand. Which needs to be modified based upon the court's earlier ruling. Today. I don't understand. I don't understand the proceedings, and I think that should be stated for the record. If I'm telling you repeatedly, Your Honor, that I don't understand, you can't force me to understand. That's a violation of my of my constitutional rights to try to force something upon me. That's coercion, Your Honor. I completely disagree with your characterization of the proceedings this morning. While it is true that you did not provide consent, you were you were entirely uncooperative with court this morning. That's because I didn't and, understand. I'm explaining why, Your Honor. I'm not I'm not trying to leave it where it was at. I'm attempting to, to answer the question. I'm attempting to, so to I'm go, explain myself of why I did not answer. It was because the, the way that you're making it seem is that I intentionally didn't want to answer, and that's not Brooks, fair. I'm, I'm moving on to instruction 315. Uh, and I'm gonna still I still don't understand. So what so how can we even proceed? Mr. Brooks, if I'm telling do you, you I don't understand, understand what that I'm asking you to be No, I at? don't. No, Mr. I don't Brooks, please stop it. And for the record, me. I don't consent to being called that name. You clearly hear me, sir, because if you didn't hear me then you wouldn't make that statement. Hearing so and understanding hear is two different things. I know you can hear me, sir. I'm asking you to Hearing and understanding is two different things. Me. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but you're, you're going to, at some point, you're going to ask me my opinion of what's going on. And then when I tell you I don't understand, it's going to be taken as me trying to delay or trying if to do this or trying talking, to do that. I will explain why I'm bringing up instruction 315. And I'm not going to understand your explanation. Well, you can't say that if you haven't heard what I have to say. Didn't you try to do this earlier before lunch? But I need to clarify something because 315, which is the instruction that has the its title, defendant elects not to testify. I had it in there. However, that instruction should really only be given if requested by the defendant. There has been no request made. And obviously this court made a finding that he forfeited his right to testify. And absent Mr. Brooks requesting that instruction to be in, I believe it would not be proper for this court to include 315. In the instructions to the jury, does the state have any position on that? Your Honor, I did look at the notes that are associated with Instruction 315, and I would agree. Right. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on whether this court should include Instruction 315 in the jury instructions to the jury? I don't even understand what 315 jury instruction is. It's entitled "Defendant Elects Not to Testify." I'll read it for you. This is the actual language of the instruction. A defendant in a criminal case has the absolute constitutional right not to testify, the defendant's decision not to testify must not be considered by you in any way 
and must not influence your verdict in any manner. So my question is, do you want this instruction read or modified in any way? You just said I got a constitutional right not to testify or to testify. I didn't make either one of those decisions, so I don't understand. The what jury instruction asking. is typically read when a defendant does not testify. In every other case that I've had, the decision on whether to testify was a decision made by the defendant personally. In this case, the court found that you forfeited your right to testify based upon your conduct. That is the ruling I made this morning. How, how did I make that decision, though? I didn't, My I didn't question never to you say yes is, or no. I never do you yes want no. the jury instructed that your silence must not be considered by them in any way and must not influence their verdict in any manner? What do you mean, my silence? My Fifth Amendment right? Correct. I, I'm not hearing a request from you to have the jury in, because given I don't, this instruction. Because I don't understand why you're asking, Your Honor. I never, I never decided to or not to testify. I, I never decided that, either sir. way. I understand that. So how can I answer that? I, I don't understand. Why, I don't understand. We are now at the moment where we are discussing whether the jury should receive an instruction specifically on you not testifying, irrespective of the reason for that. I, I believe I could modify this instruction to simply say a defendant's silence or, or a defendant not testifying should not be considered by the jury in any way and must not influence their verdict in any manner. Are you making such a request for a modified instruction? I don't understand the question because I never decided to or not to testify. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying, sir. I, I really do. It. But in light of the court's decision that you forfeited your right to testify, how did I forfeit something? Do you something want I never the said? jury to be instructed something to the effect of they cannot use your silence, meaning they cannot use you not testifying against you in any way? I don't understand because I never made a decision not to or to testify. I'll ask you one more time, and if you do not answer with a yes or no, I will take your answer of not answering as you are not making a request for a modified instruction. How can you do that, Your Honor? Do you want this court, sir, to instruct the jury in any way regarding you not testifying in this case? I don't understand the question. All right. Then based upon there has not been an express request made by Mr. Brooks to give either 315 as it's in the standard or pattern jury instruction or a modification as this court has suggested, 315 is to be taken out of the jury instructions. How are all these decisions being made without me understanding? Then I have looked over the verdict forms, and other than really what I would describe as some consistency in how phrases, whether there's all caps, not all caps, but what we call the sentence capitalization for the charges. For example, I want to be consistent with how I spell out first degree intentional homicide or first degree recklessly endangering safety. There was just some, sometimes it was capitalized, sometimes it wasn't. So we're looking through all of that to be consistent. I want to make sure the word information is capitalized since that's the charging document, things of that nature. It is my practice, and you should be aware, Mr. Brooks, that I always put the not guilty verdicts on top when I hand all the verdict forms to the jury. And by that, I mean it's by charge. So they're collated, if you will. So the not guilty followed by the guilty for counts one through 76. You said it's collated. What do that mean? So I put the not guilty, then the guilty for count one, followed by the not guilty and the guilty for count two, and so on and so forth, all the way through the remainder of the counts that are alleged in this case, which in this case, total 76. I don't understand. So how, how? I looked at the special questions that are on the guilty verdicts only. They did appear to be proper. Again, just some grammatical things, but I believe those are all accurate. Can I go to the other courtroom? Since you don't have to answer any questions, but I have to answer all, can I just go to the other courtroom? Not at this time. Why not? I keep telling you I don't understand these proceedings, and you just keep running right over my rights like they, like you don't even hear me saying anything. Attorney Basie, are you handling the verdict forms? Go ahead. Can I go to the other courtroom, please? Are you waiving your right to be present in this courtroom? I'm not waiving anything. Then the answer is no. I'm making a request. Then the answer is no. And how is it, so, so, so what? You're going to, you're going to try to force me to interrupt and do all this so you can make the record, make it seem like I forfeited something, that I came in here as soon as we got on the record and made a request to not be present for these proceedings. But when I'm making a request to avoid, to avoid the drama and all that. Sir, the only one with the drama is you. It's you too. You the big contributor to the whole thing. Mr. Brooks, I have to preside over this case. Yeah, and you haven't been, and you haven't been impartial or fair yet. 
Mr. Brooks, I have a question to the state. I ask that you not interrupt. And it's it's not about me response. interrupting. It's about me attempting to understand. I've been saying that since we came in here. Mr. Brooks, I will, you can't, you I will can't respond force me as to understand. To that. You waived your right to counsel. I didn't waive my right to no counsel. You I gave you the contract. Right. I did not. And you won't sit here and, and say that for the record because that is not no, what you happened. Have, you are no. incorrect. So we don't have the, do we have the paperwork? Are... Because I believe that I gave you the paperwork back that you. Mr. Brooks, you very. I gave it to you, altered. Clearly. And did not waive it. Have been presenting a nuanced argument regarding that, that the right to true, counsel that is not versus true. the right to assistance of counsel. That is not true. That's a pretty sophisticated argument. That's why I believe you fully understand what's I going don't. on in this courtroom. I don't fully understand. I disagree with your characterization I disagree with your of the right to counsel. You know that you accepted you the way that I gave it to the you. Entirety. So you shouldn't have did that if you if you had questions of me not understanding. I don't have any questions whatsoever. You definitely sir. do because I'm telling you right now I don't understand and you still won't even acknowledge the fact that I'm saying in open court on the record that I don't understand something. I haven't waived anything. You made decisions today that I didn't consent to that I explained I did not answer because I didn't understand which is my right to say that. Right, Mr. Brooks, you it's are also interfering my with the right proper to be and silent. orderly administration of these proceedings. I understand that you disagree with the decisions that I have made, but you aren't respectful of the decisions. You keep wanting to debate them and argue them. That is not the proper legal recourse at this time. I have asked you if you're willing to waive your right to be present. You indicated you're you're not. Because and yet you, you continue to you interrupt. Said wave. I'm not waving anything. Then that's why you're here until I make a finding that you, by your conduct, are forfeiting your right to be present. Well, make the finding and kick me out. Make the finding and hold me in contempt, which is what you're waiting to do anyway. That's why that courtroom is set up the way it has for the whole time, because at some point it's anticipated that I will be over there, which is which is not impartial and which is biased. It's judicial misconduct. I stated from the beginning, sir, that the goals of this trial So you're reading from the paper or are you reading from, or are you just citing which Number you know? one, sir, is is during the evidentiary phase of this was to control the presentation of evidence so as to ensure fairness and reliability of the criminal trial process. And I offered that evidence that you didn't allow. Developing relevant facts upon which a determination of guilt or innocence can be made. What is sometimes referred to in the case law as the ascertainment of truth. There's an equal but secondary purpose related to efficiency and effectiveness. That has been my repeated use of 90611 uh, is what that would fall under. There's a third goal of everything that I've done here, and that is the courtesy and decorum in this courtroom, what I've sometimes referred to as civility. Of course, there are other goals as well, including protecting your rights, protecting the record, protecting the jurors. How have my rights been protected, Your Honor, if I can't even put Disagreement evidence into Disagreement with the court I can't even make evidence. decisions, sir. Yeah, but how, can I, a, how can I defend myself if I can't even present evidence? But, sir, you have not been willing to follow the rules of civility but that doesn't have anything to do with my evidence it has everything I could have did that from the other courtroom too correct sir you if I can be present conduct, from the other courtroom I should be able to present evidence from the other courtroom as well and you by your conduct this morning sir I'm not saying, willing to I'm answer saying, the most saying, basic of totality, questions the totality, about whether right. you the totality. Have, have, I not asked it, have I not asked in fairness have I not asked to admit evidence have I not asked more than once Mr. Brooks you have not not asked to present any evidence. Yes, I have. You told me we weren't at the evidentiary phase. Manner. How would I know that if if, if you didn't if you didn't ask and the, you ask the question? As your own attorney, you proceed at your own peril sometimes. That Whether has you have nothing a full understanding of the rules evidence. of procedure and rules of evidence or not. And that I has made that abundantly to do with me being clear. able to present evidence. So, Mr. Brooks, not that this I, is not your that final I warning. Have been able to be admitted into I am evidence. turning to the state for a discussion of the verdict forms. If you interrupt me or them again, then I will make a finding that you forfeited your make right the to finding. be present. Make the finding. And you will appear from the neighboring courtroom. You want me to appear from the neighboring courtroom? Just, just, let's just, I don't. Just let me go. Attorney Basie, go ahead. Just let me go. I thought that all the verdict forms looked good. I did ask yeah, your clerk. All right. right. He's interrupted. He's forfeited his right to be here. He's chosen to do that despite the warning from the court will be hey, in recess until no this taken over. So let's, to let's the other make 
the record is correct. I'm the one that asked when we came in here, Your Honor. And video working appropriately. I asked when we came in here to be present for the other court. Madam Clerk, we have to do it by Zoom because we may have to utilize the share screen in order for... We don't have to utilize no share screen because I'm not going to participate in no proceedings that I don't understand. The documents. I told you I don't understand a million times. We're in recess until we get the courtroom set up. No, we don't have to be in recess. I don't agree to it. Mr. Brooks is now appearing from the other courtroom. Do you have any position on the verdict form, sir? I wasn't provided with anything that my will not accept it and return it for value. And since I'm now in another courtroom, are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? We have yet to prove it for the record. Mr. Brooks, you were provided with the verdict forms. What you did with them, I don't know. Again, I haven't been provided with anything. They were provided to you prior to lunch, the lunch break. I haven't been provided with anything. Am I muted? No, you're not. You haven't been. So I got a question about the hazard for use of a dangerous weapon. How is that being charged? Is that under 939.632? It is in the charging document, sir. How is that being charged? From my understanding, the statute reads the increased penalty provided in this section does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. Without being a victim, without being a, without the vehicle, there is no crime. So that, that would apply. So how am I charged with? Um, state one of respect. Is your, is your argument only as it relates to counts one through six or others? Whichever, whichever count, whichever count has the, the enhancement penalty for use of a dangerous weapon. Well, that would be all of the intentional homicide charges and all of the first degree of recklessly endangering safety charges. So counts one through 67. So one through 67. Correct. I can have the state respond to that. Yeah. How, how, how is, how is the alleged defendant being charged? So are you asking how are you making a specific request as it relates to the special verdict question? I would say both. Seeing as how I don't understand how, that's why there's the question. Reading the statute. In which part of this, I'm sorry, which part of the statute are you referring to again? I believe it's 939.632. And your specific argument is what again? How is that enhancement, how is the alleged defendant charged with that enhancement when reading the statute it says it, well, I just read it, so. I believe you're referring to sub two, which states the increased penalty provided in this section does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. Charge, right. That's what I just read, Your Honor. Well, what's the state's response? Using, possessing, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is not an essential element of either first degree intentional homicide or first degree recklessly endangering safety. If it were, it would be one of the elements in the standard jury instructions and the defendant can see it is not different from a situation like armed robbery, which does require the use or threatened use of a dangerous weapon. So the penalty and answer is correctly charged for those two types of crimes. Any final argument on that, sir? That's not, that's not what the statute is clearly saying. It clearly, it's clearly stating it does not apply if possessing, using, or threatening to use a dangerous weapon is an essential element of the crime charge. If there's no vehicle involved, where is the crime? It has to be an essential, essential part of it to even be, to even be a crime. The, the, the alleged defendant is charged with using a vehicle to commit these crimes. If there's no vehicle, where's the crime? So it has to be an essential element of the crime. Otherwise, there's no crime. I think it's the essential element. If, if, if you read in the statute, it's the essential element. You can't just walk up to some, you can't just walk up to someone and quote unquote, uh, run them over. There has to be something used in order for this alleged crime to transpire. And that would essentially mean the quote unquote dangerous weapon. Without the quote unquote dangerous weapon, where's the crime? So how, how can it be charged when it is the, the essential element of the crime charge? Well, it's true that in this particular case, the use of the vehicle is the mechanism, instrumentality that's being alleged to have been used, but it's not the same as being an essential element of the crime. I think the armed robbery crime is a good example of when you could not face an enhancer for use of a dangerous weapon because you can't have the crime of armed robbery without the threat or use of a dangerous weapon. And so... That's the same argument in this, Your Honor. You can't have this alleged crime without the use of the vehicle. It's the same, it's the same thing. It's not an essential element of either first degree intentional homicide or first degree recklessly endangering safety. So I'll deny the request to strike the enhancer for those reasons and find that it is properly before the court. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Brooks.
before the jury for their determination. I'm respectfully objecting that, Your Honor. Understood. Do you have any other challenges to the verdicts you'd like to raise at this time? Yeah, would that be, would my objection to that be noted for the record? It is. May I request a legal reconsideration of your ruling, Your Honor? Denied. A written finding of fact for your ruling, Your Honor? Denied. Just for the record, it's my understanding that the verdict forms were put in the garbage by Mr. Brooks and they remain in there. That was provided to me by the bailiffs. May I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law for this issue, Your Honor? You may request it. The request is denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter? This is not the proper court to grant such relief. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Your request is denied. Based on what law or fact? Your request is not based in law or fact, sir. I just stated, I just read a statute that it came from. My argument was based on a statute, a Wisconsin statute. The request is noted. Your objection to the court's finding and determination is noted. I decline to issue any type of written decision or stay pending appeal, noting there is no appeal that has been filed. May I let the record show that this court will not allow the accused to adequately defend themselves in this matter? The court's already made its findings regarding the forfeiture of right to testify and the forfeiture of the right to present additional evidence and testimony. I'm not going to revisit the same. Which was not consented to. I never stated that I did or did not want to testify. I understand. I understand. So how can that decision be made on my behalf when I didn't say either way? What I stated was I didn't understand the questions being answered. Sir, do you have any other questions or issues regarding the verdict forms? Your Honor, are you are you making a judicial determination that you don't have to answer any questions? I'm not answering those questions, sir, other than how I've already answered them. Is that a judicial determination? Sir, every decision I make is a determination by this court. Is it a judicial determination? Sir, I will ask you once more. Do you have any other issues to raise? And I will tell you once more, I don't understand the questions that you are asking. Sir, do you have any other issues to raise with respect to the verdict forms? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. He has now twice not answered the question. I'll ask one last time and specifically advise him that his failure to answer the question will be taken by this court as a no. Sir, do you have any additional? Under what law of fact can you say no? Sir, do you have any additional issues to raise with respect to the verdict forms? I do not understand the questions that you are asking. All right. He has chosen not to answer other than by saying he does not understand the questions. He did not specifically answer with a yes or no. Therefore, this court takes that as he does not have any additional issues to raise with respect to the verdict forms. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. I say that I don't understand. You can't force me to understand something, Your Honor. All right. Did the state have any other? It is my constitutional right. I'm going to mute him momentarily. Mr. Brooks, I'm muting you because I'm moving on to another topic. I understand you disagree. I will unmute. Do you have any additional requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Yeah, I have questions related to all of them because I don't understand any of it. My question was not do you have questions, but do you have any requests? And my answer was I don't understand. And I've made several requests. The requests are not related to the jury instructions, which is the phase of this hearing that this court is attempting to conduct with you and give you the opportunity to fully participate. Mr. Brooks is choosing not to answer my questions. I'm going to mute him momentarily, sir. I will ask you one more time if you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions. I then will ask you if you approve of the jury instructions. If you do not answer those questions as it relates to the question, do you have any requests as it relates to jury instructions, I will interpret that as a no. And if you do not specifically answer the question about the jury instructions, I will interpret that as your approval. So first question to you is do you have any, and you're unmuted, do you have any requests at this point as it relates to the jury instructions? And I just said before, I said I do. I said I don't understand the questions. Of course I have questions if I don't understand. So do you have any requests for any additional instructions that are not included or to remove any that are included? Yeah, remove them all until I understand or add the jury instructions that I have myself. What jury instructions do you have, sir? So now you don't know I had jury instructions and I told you this weeks ago. What filing are you referring to, sir? If I've overlooked that, I will certainly reconsider, but I'm not aware of a specific jury instruction. It seems like you overlooked a lot, Your Honor. Can you point me to a specific filing? So you have all my filings on file? Are you saying that you have my filings and they haven't been admitted into evidence? Oh, my 
my computer is not working. Oh, not a computer now. Sir, I please direct me to the specific filing that you're referring to that has a request related to jury instructions. You just said, you just said you was referring to the filing, right? Did you just say that? That's not what I said. Did you just say what filing are referring to jury instructions? Did you or did you not just say that? I said, do you have a specific filing you can refer the court to that relates to jury instructions? So is your computer working or is it not working? It's I'll being a this, little temperamental, but I have... I just can't search, use my search function, so if you can direct me to a filing, that would be great. It would also be great for those filings to be admitted into evidence. Sir, simply filing something with the court does not make it evidence during the evidentiary phase of a trial. There are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern that. And you told me to make all my filings in writing. Sir, I, I said if you had a true. motion, it needed to be put in all writing. All those were motions. All those were motions. Sir, what filing are you referring the court to? Look through all my motions. Sir, it's not my job job to advocate on your behalf. If you have something in particular, sir, I asked you, ask you to do your job. Sir, if you have something, a specific request, now is the time to make it. Well, how about this? I, I, uh, I, don't, I don't accept none of those jury instructions. I, I don't I don't accept any of them. Any of them. And again, I'll tell you, I don't understand. Why do I have to keep saying this when it's clear that I don't understand? Jury instructions were due, I believe, on August 30th. The states submitted their proposed jury instructions and the defense indicated that they agreed with our filing. So what jury instructions are you referring to or what document is, is being referred to on the alleged defendant's behalf? Because as we all know, I didn't obtain the uh, the discovery in full until the end of September. So there were there was documents that I didn't even know that existed. Mr. Brooks, one final time. Do you have any specific requests as it relates to the jury instructions other than your request that they all be struck? And I'm telling you, Your Honor, I don't understand the question. I, I, I can't. All right, then I will take I, his response I, that he does not understand that he does not have any additional requests. I didn't say and it. And they will be I said I don't approved. Understand. They will be approved and are, no, I'm going to have to mute no. him. They are approved as been drafted by the court and modified during the jury instruction conference on the record this morning and this afternoon. Any comment by about that, Mr. Brooks, or any statement? I don't, I don't consider being called that name, and I've just told you I don't understand these jury questions. I'm not going to know how, how they allow it to pass just because you feel that they should when I'm telling you I don't understand it. I would know that those, his... Not his, one of those jury instructions came from me. Not one. How's that fair? Mr. Brooks, this court gave you the draft no, you of the jury anything. instructions. I, mean, I need anything. to mute you because, once again, he's debating about things that I think are very clear on the record. This court provided both the state and Mr. Brooks with a written printout, 107 pages long, of the jury instructions it was considering. For the record, I am approving of the verdicts. I am approving of the jury instructions. And once again, before we break for the day, I will make sure to provide the parties with written printouts of both of the documents as they now stand. Mr. Brooks, do you have any of those final type of questions or issues that you want the court to address? You are unmuted. I am. I just told you I'm not. I'm since since nothing since nothing I say even matters at this point. I'm just going to tell the jury what they need to know. I'm just going to tell them the truth. Mr. Brooks, you are aware that your closing arguments have to be based on law and fact, correct? They're going to be based on whatever I base them on. Well, I trust the state will object when appropriate, well, if appropriate. There's going to be a whole lot of objection then because I'm going to tell the truth. You you haven't you haven't allowed you just been making all the decisions for me, even though you know. I, I told you repeatedly that I don't understand, and you still make re decisions based on, on, on my behalf without my consent. Without me, I'm telling you I don't understand, and you still make a decision determining my life. Are you telling me, sir, that you will refuse to follow the simple rules of decorum, courtesy, it, it civility, no, the rules of evidence, and the rules of procedure? Words. Don't try to come with your slick words, and don't put words in my mouth. Sir, I am not being slick. I'm trying to you, preserve sir, you the been, integrity. Okay, You've been slick. you right. been slick. I'm going to mute you, sir, since what you are saying is not productive. It is not courteous. It is disrespectful. I, I need to... Say. 
I need to go I'm over these. All right, I'm muting him. I'm contemplating maybe putting a time restriction for both parties. Do you think it would be reasonable to give the parties each an hour total that would reserve fifth, whatever's left from your initial for your any rebuttal? Yes. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on that? I am unmuting you. I would note he takes the headphones on and off throughout. He doesn't have them on. He's looking at a book. We should stop saying a book. I'm looking at the Bible. Thank you. Not just a book. It's the book. Can't disagree with you there, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, people actually live by it, though. Anyway. Sir, I'm contemplating putting an hour time limit on closing arguments. I ain't doing no closing arguments tomorrow. Um, the closing arguments will most likely be tomorrow. Given, I'm not doing it tomorrow. Then you'll forfeit your right to give one, sir, because as we have... You can't, you can't force me. You can't force me not... What type, what type of court is this where you can say you're going to force somebody not to be able to give a closing argument? How sir, is that law Sir, law? if you choose How not to give law one... Law? Ah, ah, ah. How is that law for law? Sir, if you choose not... Yeah. Not to give Good. one right. at you're not letting me finish and you're mocking me yes. right now which is incredibly disrespectful once again okay, you didn't even let me get my sentence out i'll mute him once again because clearly he just wants to be disruptive this afternoon mr brooks i'll unmute you but that is the expectation of the court that closing arguments will be done tomorrow Mr. Brooks, I actually can, under all of the rules of procedure, it is my job to make sure there's effective okay. and efficient administration of this trial. So, you so are. Then, then I, I should be allowed to, then if that's the case, then I should be allowed to tell the jury what they need to know, which is the truth. That they have the power. They have the power to nullify laws. You are laws. absolutely not allowed to tell the jury that. There's a jury instruction that I will have ready to go if you even attempt to raise the issue of jury nullification, oh, so, sir. You have so, absolutely so. no right to raise that. That is oh, clear on the law. I can raise I can raise what I want to raise. And you can't so you added these jury instructions at the last minute, then you should have never approved them from the get go because I never approved them. I told you I didn't understand them at all whatsoever. And you still passed. Sir, if you understand jury nullification, you understand jury instructions. It clear to Man, me you've done your homework. I don't care what you're talking about. I don't care what you're talking about. I'm going to let them know that they can nullify any law they don't agree with, which is my right. It is not your right to do that. Say it is not. It is not your right to raise jury nullification. Show me lawful law then. Show me. All right. I'm going to mute him once again. He's starting to raise his voice. He's starting to hit his hands on the table. It's very clear to this court that uh, it's going to be a challenge tomorrow during his closing arguments. Mr. Brooks, any further topics by you? Am I muted? No, you're unmuted. So, again, I don't understand that you just said, but um, I don't, how, how can you, how can you deprive me of my constitutional right? How can you trample on my constitutional right? Ah. Sir, you can forfeit a number of constitutional rights by ah. misconduct on your part. Not if I reserve my rights, you can't, you can't let me reserve my rights and then take them from you. Sir, I direct your attention to Chambers versus Mississippi, Rock versus Arkansas, State versus Anthony, Illinois did versus Allen, right? did they reserve their right? the Benaby decision, there, there is a host they, of case they, law, sir. Did they reserve their right? All right, sir, you are simply mistaken on that. So I'm muting him once again. He's not giving me any other issues uh, to address. Go ahead. You're muted. And since we're all making records to make you look bad, I think we should say for the record that one of the rights I have is to demand that the court places the evidence any unrevealed contract, statute, laws, rules, or information being used against me under the Sixth Amendment. <laughs> So how come how come that hasn't been placed in the evidence? What law are you referring to, sir? I'm, I'm referring to my rights under the Sixth Amendment. And, and what my case law says you have a right to do exactly what you just said you have a right to do? The Constitution, Amendment 6. Sir, that is very general, your statement. It's vague. There's nothing so specific go you have referenced. You want, you, want, you want paragraph 2 or something like that? Is that what you want? No, that's not what I'm saying, sir. You're making so, general arguments also, that aren't based in fact yes. and are over generalizations of what the law requires as well. I accept for value and return for value any documents in this matter. Since, you know, it might be another record of what I'm doing, you know, since it's always a record of what I'm doing. And I also have the right, I also have the right to ask, is this time in 
our advocacy law because judging by the gold eagle on top of the flag, it, it's some explaining that needs to be done. And that is a military symbol. So is this a common law court or advocacy law court? Mr. Brooks, I'm frankly not going to address these nonsense legal theories of yours. I'm muting you. They have been debunked. They are typical sovereign tactics that have no place in our judicial system. We are in recess. I'll see everyone tomorrow morning at 8.30. I'll just direct the bailiffs to wait until we have the verdict forms to give. And if it takes us longer than 30 minutes, we'll make sure they're delivered to him in his jail today.